Marco, give me a little call back. Call back to say we're retired and going home. It'll take us a while to pack it up. Take off the clock, that's even better. Yes, yes, okay. Now we have more light on your face. We begin. Okay. Uh, I'm going to introduce you and then we start. No problem. We'll grab up a mic here. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Don't worry. Uh, I'll introduce you and then you can go. Okay. We're starting again. So we're waiting for a few more people to come in from out from outside and then we're going to start. So let's give it 30 seconds for people to come in. What's the name of the um, Is it out? Okay, 30 seconds. Well, I don't know what you're used to it. It comes all over. Okay. The whole Okay, everybody, welcome to HIP. Um, as, you, as you know and as you have all read on the program, we, we would have liked to begin HIP with, a, with a, an address by Emmanuel Goldstein, the editor of 2600 Magazine and the organizer of the Beyond Hope Conference in New York. Um, due to fiendish technical difficulties and because we could not get the audio link, over our deluxe picture tell box working as of yet, we're still working on it. Uh, this address is going to be rather short because the audio is absolutely of less than optimal quality. So uh, the address is going to be very short. It's, it's going to be very hard to understand. We promise you a longer and, and more uh, uh, hi-fi address later during, during this conference. And of course, all the, the shared sessions between HIP and Beyond Hope will have perfect audio quality, we hope, we think. But uh, for now, this address is going to be very short, and I pass the mic to Emmanuel Goldstein. Okay, they're applauding, they're after the applause. So. Thank uh -huh. 
Okay. And then Are you Are you done? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well. Cool. Cool. Okay, we'll talk to you later. Good luck. Okay, cool. Cool hip starts with being hacked by Bronco. I really like this. Okay, we're going to switch to another. Video source here. Um, we'd like to welcome you all to this, the exact middle of nowhere. Again, a place far away from society, or at least a few kilometers away from, from the nearest city. Uh, the PTT has complimented us on picking a spot far enough away from wires and infrastructure that they had to set up a microwave beam in order to get us connected to the network. So we were complimented on that. Um, it's been a while ago, it's been four years 
since HEU hacking at the end of the universe in 1993. And HEU was held in what seems now like a completely different era, a completely different century. There was no public access internet in many countries, in many places. Uh, even in Holland, very few people had internet access. HEU had what was then state-of-the-art gopher server in use to inform the public around the internet what HEU, what HEU was and how they could get there. And we still had to do lots of other advertising. We had to make posters, we had to uh, fold lots of folders in order to get HEU known to the community of hackers around Europe and around the world. Uh, now that wasn't necessary anymore, we've only advertised on the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web in 1993 didn't even really exist yet. It was, it was there, but it wasn't really in use. HEU had two times 19.2 internet connection, and it was enough. People could actually tell that out to the world, they could IRC, they could do anything they wanted to over two 19.2 kilobit connections. And the hackers have played a major role in making the internet accessible and developing it. We've set up internet access, we've helped set up internet access, we've set up email, we've built public spaces on the net, and we've raised public awareness on issues like privacy, encryption, and lots of social issues regarding the net. But there's also a lot of problems that face us, that face the internet community and, and in fact, maybe in the entire world. Our internet environment is being polluted, which may or may not be a result of the very ideals of the internet. There's an urge by governments all over the world to take control of this, this, these new technologies and to regain their control over the media. And there's censorship. Many countries, governments are trying to control what people can and cannot say, also on the internet. So, we are still facing large problems in the world, even though internet access is now there for most of us West Europeans and for most of us north of the equator, there are still large problems facing us. Okay, and then now we are here today, and we have more people, we have more cities, we have more logistics, it's all much more complicated than four years ago. We have a six, six megabit uh, microwave beam doing our internet connection. Um, and um, we only hope it's enough because we are all taking so much energy, you can imagine.
Hi everybody. Two minutes. Two minutes.
Beyond hope. You're supposed to applaud now. <laughs> I want to give a special thank you to Garth Brooks for that wonderful concert last night. To pick us off. Garth, he's out there somewhere. I don't know exactly where he is. Last I heard, he was he was out in the network room trying to get his PC to work. Um, <laughs> We're here tonight to answer questions from the press. Uh, the conference officially starts tomorrow, but we're here tonight to sort of play around with our gizmos and get things working. A note from the network room, um, let's see, connectivity will be available in a few hours, probably overnight we'll be actually connected to the net, and uh, the main hope.net machine that you're all gonna try to hack is uh, gonna be available tomorrow. So uh, please be patient with that. If you're a volunteer and you want your volunteer badge, please do not ask Pam anymore because uh, she will kill you if you ask one more time. Uh, they will be available again tomorrow when the conference officially starts. Um, we have a, a big lineup of uh, speakers and panels. Uh, we have a schedule. We just got back from Kinko's. So that will be available in the back, uh, in the merchandising room, whatever it is that you want to, uh, to look at it and see what's coming up. I can tell you briefly, um, Tonight we'll be uh, sort of playing around with this thing, with the, with the uh, World Wide Web. If there's anything you want to mess around with and show us, uh, we have a PC there that we can uh, sort of play around with and uh, do things like that. We'll, we're going to take questions about 2600 coming up at around 9 o'clock, and um, we'll be playing some videos from 10 o'clock onwards. Uh, tomorrow, though, when we start the official conference, Brock Meeks of MSNBC will be giving the keynote address. That's at noon. And uh, we'll have all kinds of other panels throughout the day, including, uh, including some secret stuff that you might not uh, be aware exists on uh, privacy, um, information on people. Uh, that'll be done by a real live private eye right here live on stage. Uh, we'll also have um, Bruce Schneier talking about encryption, uh, the folks from The Loft, uh, a live, live broadcast of Off the Hook at 6.30, being beamed out to all of uh, the tri-state area. And, uh, We'll have some folks from Steal This Radio, which is the Lower East Side's first low-power radio station that has declined to get permission from the FCC. <laughs> uh, we'll have a lecture from Ira Winkler, where hackers and criminals collide, all kinds of legal information there. Uh, GSM phones with uh, fiber optic, Tom from England, a couple of other uh, expert types. I'm happy to announce that Bernie S. will be here. He will be on a couple of panels, including one on dangerous legislation that may just throw you in prison for a couple of years, as well as a prisoner panel with fiber optic to discuss just what happens to hackers when they go to jail and how we can prevent such things. Uh, we'll also be tying into the conference in Holland. Uh, how many of you know there's a conference going on in Holland right now, too? This, this is probably the biggest hacker event ever in history uh, because, A, we have a huge conference here, but B, there's another huge conference someplace else, and we're tying them together. Uh, we, we connected the picture tell last night to give their opening address. Uh, however, the sound didn't work very well, so they could see my face, but they couldn't hear what I was saying. Uh, but it's, it's, it's progress of sorts. Uh, we will have a very good network this time. If you recall, uh, how many of you were at Hope One in 1994? <laughs> well, as you know, we only had a 28-8 connection, and most of the time that was being ping-flooded by somebody in the Midwest. So, 
We have a 10 megabit connection this time, and uh, we expect that to stay up a little bit, uh, a little bit longer. So um, that'll be again happening overnight. We'll be getting that hooked up to the network. So this, this could be a very historical conference in that it could be the first conference ever in the United States to actually have a working network that stays up. <laughs> We're all hackers, so go figure. Okay, we have a bunch of people here today that uh, come from all over the place. We have Veggie from CDC. We have Fiber Optic, who is making his first appearance at a hacker convention ever. From England, the notorious cyber junkie. Also from England, Zap. And former editor of TAP magazine, Cheshire Catalyst. So, I'll give them each a, a moment or two to say whatever they want to say to you people, and uh, then we can take some questions and get started. Veggie? What? You have anything to say, Veggie? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> no comment. He didn't bring Mr. T for some reason. No, I didn't bring Mr. T. Oh. Fiber optic. Oh, geez. Um, Pull the microphone. Speak into the microphone. Thank you for coming. I have nothing to say. <laughs> Cyber Junkie. Um, no, I got nothing to say either, really. Well, say that into the microphone. <laughs> I said very quietly, I ain't got anything to say either. See, he's got a real accent. <laughs> Zap. Yeah, speak to my liar. <laughs> Well, I'm the Cheshire Catalyst, and I used to be the uh, press liaison for TAP as well as the editor and publisher, the guy that pasted it up, uh, got it to the mailbox, a few other things. Uh, so I've gotten used to handling some of the questions from the press, and the one thing i just like to get across is all hacking is is just hacking away at the computer keyboard until it does what you want it to do. After that, whoop. <laughs> uh, after that, uh, it's trying to keep that program running, getting it fixed. Uh, the true hacker syndrome is when you see a piece of software that doesn't work the way you think it should, and you try and tell the, the guy who's supposed to maintain it what it should be doing, and usually how to fix it. Uh, it's called bug reps, bug reports. And I wind up on the World Wide Web sending in these bug reps to people, some of whom have no clue what I'm talking about because they they use some piece of software to write their web page, and they weren't really sure how to use that. So it's an interesting phenomenon to see all these newbies using all these sophisticated software tools, not really knowing what they're doing, and putting up some interesting things. But they're hacking. <laughs> they're just hacking away at it until that's what they want it to do. So now part of the share the knowledge syndrome that I have as a hacker is to help get the word out to some of these people writing web pages. You've got graphics. They're good graphics, but don't forget the guys that can't see the graphics. The people using links, the non-graphic web browsers. My thing is information. If you go to my homepage, http colon slash slash digital.net slash tilde Cheshire, the, yeah, plug. Can we go yeah. to that page? Can You'll find that uh, it's mostly text. There's very few graphics. Can we, can we uh, go to that page, please? Well, probably not immediately. Let me type it to you again. Yeah, they're typing it. Okay. HTTP colon slash slash digital, D-I-G-I-T-A-L dot N-E-T slash the tilde character, which is up next to the number one, but you have to hit the shift key to get there. Now, there's a lot of newbies. I do have to explain that, too. I expect these folks here won't be that newbie, but uh, after the tilde, it's Cheshire, C-H-E-S-H-I-R-E, -E, slash will be a little faster, and it'll uh, hit enter, and it should get you there. Now, one of the graphics I do have on my page, I'm fairly proud of. Um, actually, if you want to put, um, oh, okay, it's coming up now. Ooh. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, what characters have been forgotten? Oh, you, now did I tell you to put WWW up there? I did not tell you to put WWW because that's not how you reach it. How did Take you get the error message on the side of a milk cart? Well, that's this really is cool. the error message from Florida Online, digital.net. Yeah, this is a graphic. Okay. <laughs> and also notice the little TM trademark symbol. That is character number 153. So you, you can make that a single character. Uh, if you go back up to the line and after the, uh, the slash, last slash there, if you put pound sign, politics. My political agenda and the logo for Sam's Army, which is the National Supporters Club for the U.S. National Soccer Team. <laughs> Uh, yes, I am a one-worlder. I believe one world, one game, and the rest of the world likes soccer people. <laughs> um, that's one of the few graphics I have on this page. Most everything else is information. I've got the cover from an issue of Wired magazine because the cover article is a phenomenal article on the global fiber optic link, a flag, the fiber link around the globe. Uh, and since Wired Magazine still has that article available online, I link to it so you can grab it. I also give instructions on how to download it so you don't have to waste all your online time reading it online. Uh, I expect some newbies to coming me into the page and I try and educate them. Um, let's see. The other graphic I have on there, of course, is the Hope logo, uh, which was up on the site a couple, about a week ago, and we finally got that dealt with on how to put uh, the logo up so people could capture it easily. Um, I mentioned information as a sport. <laughs> Share the knowledge is where I come from. It's gotten me into more trouble than anything else. And, uh, you know, I, I love it when people send me emails saying they like all my different sites. They bookmark me because they know that they can get to, rather than bookmarking everything I've got. Um, if you have questions, I've got links to my email, cheshire at 2600.com. May take a week to get back to you, but I'll send you something back. And because I want to help, I want to help get the information out. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to invite our fellow panelists here, if they have any web pages that represent them, to let us know, and we'll, we'll connect to them right here. I'd like um, to make a suggestion, uh, too. When the audience says by applause that they like a page, bookmark it. And at the end, put the list of bookmarks up on the hope.net. Sounds good. Or rank it by applause level. <laughs> right. Um, before we began here, we decided to visit the, uh, the web page of our sister conference, Hacking in Progress, uh, the HIP conference. And uh, as it turned out, uh, it wasn't secure. Uh, <laughs> uh, thanks to Cyber Junkie here. Uh, maybe he could explain um, what it was that was done or not done. Um, if we could connect to uh, this, this URL, again, no www here. Uh, it's guide.campsite.hip97.nl. I'm not sure if they fixed it or modified it or, or whatnot, but uh, they have a little diary going there of what's happening. Hip97.nl. Hip not hipnet, hip97. We are waiting for something in particular, okay. Oh, that's bad. Hopefully by tomorrow we'll have the terminal up here so, so we can actually type as we speak. That would be neat. Okay, connecting over to Holland now. Okay, this is the online diary. They're keeping a diary from their campsite. Okay, can we scroll down? Keep scrolling. Okay, this is the hip uh, Friday morning section. I like the font. <laughs> Click on it where it says hacked page there. <laughs>
<laughs> They've contacted Interpol and we'll, we should be prosecuted shortly. <laughs> Uh, Cyber, did you want to say anything about this particular system? Um, not really, other than that I was pretty surprised to find a web page that had been set up by hackers that was vulnerable to the IMAP exploit. <laughs> well, we should point out that if you are setting up a system inside, you can expect to be hacked, if not by the Dutch, then by us. <laughs> because that's what we're here for, to figure out vulnerabilities and mess around with things. But if you do hack someone else's machine, uh, please uh, don't do anything bad, like wipe out things. But do let the person know that you've been there. Um, all right, we'll, we'll take any questions. If anybody has any URLs they want to go to and show us what they're up to. Um, I know there was a story in the Associated Press about the conference. If you want to maybe look around on the web or something, maybe they, we can find that. If, um, it might be on CNN or something. Uh, but if there's anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask them. They're a quiet bunch, right? Nobody here wants to talk, nobody there wants to talk. What's happening over there so far? Well, uh, they, well, you know they're outside in tents and things like that, so they're basically trying to keep dry and <laughs> figure out how to get electricity from tent to tent. What kind of uplink do they have? Uh, they, they also, well, you see, the thing is, uh, HIP is run by Access for All, which uh, emanated from the Dutch magazine Hacktick, uh, which used to be a hacker magazine before they stopped publishing a couple of years ago. Uh, Access for All happens to be the largest provider in the country because they got such an early start and they have all kinds of connections as far as getting connectivity. So they have a 10 megabit connection as well to the internet out there on the campsite. Uh, they have microwave links back to Amsterdam. So uh, we both have very good connectivity this time and once we get the, um, uh, the, the picture tell working, you'll be able to communicate with them live here on stage. And we're planning several panels, including the Loft panel and Bruce Schneier's cryptography panel, where they will be listening, they will be asking questions as well as if they were here. Anyway, are there any members of the press here? This is a press conference after all. <laughs> we did let them in, didn't we? Yeah, I saw a few press texts, I saw a few people earlier. Okay. Um, I mean, the, the press is always asking us questions about, about hacking, you know, about what is, uh, you know, how do we justify our existence and things like that? So that's what we're here to do. I'm sorry? How many people are we expecting? Well, we, we've, we've got quite a bunch already. Um, we're expecting a couple of thousand at least. Um, because have you seen what's going on out there? Are there signs up? There, there are all these stickers over the 9X phones. I mean, someone's been busy. <laughs> and, uh, of course, there's been publicity through the magazine, through the radio show, Off the Hook. Um, so we expect a lot of people who are non-hackers as well to come to this thing, which I think is a, is a good way of being introduced to the network. If you see somebody out there who has no idea what they're doing, show them. Show them how things work, how the, how the, uh, the web works. That's kind of what this panel is for, so we can show people, get their first taste of the net. Uh, through hackers' eyes. I think that's the healthiest way to do it. Do you know, uh, do you know whether or not you're being monitored by any federal, state, or federal agency? Do we know if we're being monitored by any federal, state, or local officials? Uh, I think it's a safe assumption. I think, yeah. <laughs> we're, always, we're always being monitored one way or another. Um, I mean, for one thing, we do a radio show on a 50,000 watt radio station. But you know, the funny thing is that the Secret Service actually contacted our radio station to demand cassette copies of the show. And we said to them, well, why don't you just listen and tape it yourself? You know, it's a, it's a radio station. And they didn't call back, so I think they, they might have figured out how to do that. Oh, yeah. So they, they do have a, a keen interest in our activities. But um, yeah, we know they're out there. But, you know, you can't let that bother you. You can't let that stop what you're, what you're doing. And uh, we, we try to laugh it off. But there are those people that get prosecuted by them, and we can't forget about those. Oh, I, I forgot to mention, um, for the first time ever on Sunday, we'll be having a panel featuring the story of Kevin Mitnick from Kevin Mitnick's perspective. His lawyer will be on a panel answering questions about just what has been going on with this case. Kevin's been in jail for two and a half years now without trial. 
and I think it's time for a lot of questions to be answered. John Markoff might even be here too, so we might have some questions to ask of him. To, to get no. back to the question of uh, whether you're being monitored, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily, you know, necessarily. Right, I mean, stop rather, that. The, the, whether there's, there are people here, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing, because I think that if people in law enforcement communities, <laughs> if another, another if, point too is that um, I would rather have them watching me when I was publishing Tab, because. I knew they'd be watching me. I was squeaky clean and kept myself squeaky clean because I knew they were watching me. And I'd rather have them watching me than somebody who was writing articles who was really doing things out there. That, that's not even my point. My point is that I'd rather have them see hackers and know that hackers are people instead of getting the ideas of hackers from oh, yeah. you know, watching war games and, figuring that, and, and reading news stories that say hackers are moving satellites. Right. And I'd rather have them knowing what I'm doing than sitting back in their offices wondering what I'm doing. Yeah. Their paranoia is more what I'm worried about than anything else. That's one of the reasons why we have 2,600 meetings in open areas, because we're trying not to hide. But the funny thing is, they try to hide at the meetings. They're walking around with sunglasses, hiding behind poles, peering at us, and, and taking pictures. And, you know, if they would just come up to us and talk to us, we'll talk back, and they might learn a thing or two. So it's, it's kind of funny. They won't get out of that particular way of life of, of spying on us. It's what they do. What can I say? Any other questions? Questions about the panel, about New York City, about what not to do. How many people are from out of town? <laughs> we were supposed to have the mayor here to welcome us, but <laughs> I think Garth kept him up late last night, and uh, we'll just have to accept our, our welcoming. Uh, this is a great part of town. There's all kinds of things to do here. There's the Angelica Theater a block away with all kinds of alternative films. There's um, Little Italy, Chinatown, Avenue A, Broadway, The Village, all that kind of stuff. So uh, you won't be bored, that's for sure. Uh, that's if you happen to step outside of this place, <laughs> where you also won't be bored. There's all kinds of things going on with computers and with speakers and with uh, neat things on the merchandising tables as well. Um, so what we're going to do is move on to the, to the web sessions. Uh, and anybody is welcome to do this. Basically, it's very informal if anybody wants to just type in some URLs and show people some crazy things that are going on. Try, try to avoid pornography, though. There might be, there might be children and senators around. We don't, we don't want to annoy them. And um, by the way, tomorrow is Senator Exxon's birthday. I don't know if you know that. So we have to plan something real special. OK, well, thanks, uh, thanks for coming, members of the press. And um, any other questions, feel free to ask us. We'll be playing around with the... Uh, I, I was... There was a request for people from the press to please stand up. Start Brooks. Start Brooks. <laughs> you know, he, he didn't wear it on, on, on stage, actually. Did he wear it on stage? Okay. I, <laughs> I'll tell you, he's quite a guy. He really is. Did anybody go to the concert last night? One person. All right. Well, we were all pretty busy, I know. All right. Well, we're glad things are working out for Garth. Um, okay. So we're here. If you have any questions, come up and ask us. Um, we'll be playing around with the video projector. At 10 o'clock, we'll be showing all kinds of weird hacker videos. Uh, if you have anything that you'd like us to, to show... Oh, we're currently broadcasting the conference via real audio. So hello, all those people out there that didn't come here. <laughs> Losers. Boy, are you missing a party. You still have two days to come make it and get down here and visit with us. If you have to leave the conference, though, or if you'd just rather be home with your computer, we're, we'll be broadcasting the whole thing live so you can, you can listen to it there. Um, we'll also oh. be making announcements on some things that are going on, parties, uh, events that you can go to. So, uh, so stay tuned. And if anybody hacks the network, we'll be announcing that here as well. So uh, wander all throughout the rooms, you know, look around, ask lots of questions, and... Keep in mind, too, this conference is not just for coming in here and listening to people talk from the podium. This is a conference for getting together with other people, schmoozing, and sharing information among yourselves. You'll find it's the best part of the conference when you stop to talk with people. Okay. Thanks, thanks for coming, and uh, we'll be here.